Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Aaron Dowd, and I'm going to show you how I do podcasts. Um, in Logic Pro, anyways, uh, a lot of the same stuff will probably work f other places, uh, stuff like EQ and, and noise gates and maybe compressors. But I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what I know, and I'm I'm not an expert. I haven't had a a bunch of real like training at a college or anything, but I've kind of figured a lot of this stuff out for myself, and I figured somebody might be interested in, in learning this stuff, so. Uh, I'm going to jump into it. I've got uh, a couple of tracks created here. Um, they're just basic raw tracks. There's nothing really going on. I got the raw audio and I dragged it in from my Dropbox folder. This is for a show called the ATX Web Show. My good buddy Dave Rupert um, does. Uh, and it's cool. So what I do is I drop it in and I've named him as Dave. And you can double click on any of these things and name them as guest or whatever you want to do. If you want to add one, you can go up here. One audio format mono is fine. Um, then you can create and you got another track down here. And this is a little mixer section down there. You can bring this up or down by hitting the X button. Um, and you can resize it here just to kind of see everything that goes on. I like to make, when I'm editing, I like to make these uh, these individual tracks a little bit bigger. You can click on the bottom left hand side of the screen until that little grabber comes up. Um, and then I'll usually change this icon fee over here. I'll change that to the little podcast guy. It's just completely silly, but I, I like it. And then I hit option C and I change the color to like a cool green color and I give everybody different different weird colors so I can kind of spot it. It's just something I do. So the important stuff. Um, first off, I add an EQ and I put on uh, a little low, a little high pass filter to cut out some of the low end of Dave's voice. Just depends on the microphone and you got to listen and they all sound different. Um, so you just got to listen to it and see what sounds good. Um, I always cut off a little, cut out a little bit of uh, volume around 2200 hertz just because it's a really annoying frequency for people. Uh, the ears just don't enjoy it. So I cut out 200 and I make it kind of make it kind of thin so it doesn't cut out much. Um, and then what you can do is later you can you can boost up, get you a little spike going and then just move it uh, up and down the range and hear what it sounds like to hear if you hear something that terrible that pops out at you. And I apologize if this is really, really loud, but I'm about to hit play. Uh, so hang on. So you hear, I don't know if you can hear the different, um, uh, Andy, um, for those who don't know you, um, Andy works at, uh, agency here in town. Uh, so I hear the, the, the microphone is a little bit squeaky around 5k called handsome, handsome dot is, and you may, so I cut it, I, I find that frequency and then I just cut it out just a little bit and this reduces the volume of that specific frequency at 49.50. So you can you can just kind of play with that, but that's where I start. And then I save that setting um, as kind of just a general starting place. Save it as podcast and that'll save it in the channel EQ of a folder of Logic. And then I can reuse that later or I can go over here and click on EQ for somebody else and use that same one. Um, show up under podcast and boom, right there. Cool. So that's a good starting spot. And then I add a, uh, add a noise gate. I'm going to set this to loop real quick just by clicking and dragging. So you got a little green bar that loops. I'm going to add a noise gate. Noise gates are important because if you get some background noise, uh, it's good to kind of to reduce the volume of the person talking. Or, I'm sorry, can't. I evidently I can't do two things at once. It's good to reduce the volume of someone if they're not talking. Um, so you got the threshold and this is where the noise gate will kick in um, whenever the, the volume of the audio drops below 34 decibels. The no this noise gate will start to kick in and reduce it down to 100. The reduction is 100. Or you can set it to about 70 just so it reduces it a little bit because 100 is super, super quiet. And then it might sound unnatural if there's complete silence. So you just kind of you just kind of reduce it a little bit. So all the background noise is kind of taken out. And then attack is how fast it comes on. Um, and you want to give that a little bit of space. And then how long it's held for. Um, 
and then how long the release is. And I set the release kind of high so it doesn't uh, doesn't kick in right away whenever someone stops talking. So let's see what it sounds like real quick. Well, I'm glad to have you back. And uh, this week we are joined uh, by a special guest, Andy Kyle. Andy, hello. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh, Andy, um, for those who don't know you, um, Andy works at an agency here in town uh, called Handsome. <laughs> well, I'm glad that... So you, you're wanting to go for some, some reduction whenever people aren't talking, but you don't want to make it very obvious. You don't want it to cut off right away whenever someone stops talking, like they say hi, and then it's just like gone. Um, you don't want that. So play around with this release setting and the hold setting and make sure that it sounds natural um, and just not very abrupt. And that'll, that'll, that'll help out a lot. So, and then I'm going to save that setting as a uh, podcast as well, just so I have a, a place to start. Uh, I've already got all these saved, as you can see. Okay, cool. Another good one in, in Logic that I use is the Speech Enhancer. And this just brings out the, um, the good qualities of someone's voice. So you can turn on the Voice Enhance down here and set it to Male Solo. It's also got a Denoiser. And this will kind of cut out any background noise. Dave doesn't have a lot of background noise because he's cool and he uses a good microphone, which is another important part of podcasting is using the, really the best microphone you can afford. Don't go with the crappy ones. Um, yeah, like a road podcaster, I use a I use a Shure PG27 USB mic. It's probably a little bit more expensive. Or they're all, all around 200 bucks. But if you can drop 60 80 or $100 on a, on a microphone, you know, that's cool. Do it. You, you want to be a good podcaster? I mean, this is more about editing, but you can tell people if they send you bad quality audio. Be like, yo, drop some money on a good a good microphone. So... Uh, so the, the speech enhancer is cool. It just kind of makes it sound good here. I'll play it for a second and I'll bypass so you can hear the difference. <laughs> well, I'm glad to have you back. And uh, this week we are joined uh, by a special guest, Andy Kyle. Andy. I don't, I don't even know if you can hear that, but uh, if you get some good headphones on, you'll be able to hear the difference. Um, and then I just use a compressor and Dave's audio looks pretty good. It's very even. It's not super quiet. It's not... Um, it's not spiking anywhere. He does he does a pretty good job. So that looks pretty good. Sometimes you'll have people that are a little bit quiet and then they'll have these crazy loud moments. So what you kind of want to do is use a compressor to compressor to even that out. So under dynamics you go to compression. And then I just go with the even the stock setting is fine, but I go with a little higher ratio. Um maybe 4 to 1 and then you keep the attack kind of low threshold drop it down a little bit you don't really need much gain because you're just kind of trying to even out the high points and the low points um so that'll bring the that'll bring the, the low up a couple decibels and once it starts getting into the high range um all that so that's a that's that's a fairly decent setting you, you can play around with it like anything else the more you play with something the better you get at it so just listen and use your ears and um figure out what sounds good so that's 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 a that's a pretty solid uh, channel strip setting there. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. So now that I've got this this whole little channel strip set up, I go into settings and I save this channel strip, uh, and I save it as I'll say like Dave ATX Web Show. Okay, I don't need all caps. And and that way anywhere I go, anywhere I go where I have a channel strip, I could use this channel strip setting under here. Bam, it's going to duplicate this one. Pretty nice. So that way you don't have to build these things every single time. That's going to waste a lot of time. You don't really need to do that. After you get all of them built out the way you want, then you go up here and you hit save as template. And you're going to want to do this probably before you do the, the audio, but that can't always be helped. Um, but you could remove the audio by hitting delete on your keyboard and then going into the media browser and then deleting this file and then you could save it uh, you just have to redrop the audio file in there so I'm not going to do that right now but you could but you want to go in there and you want to save as template uh, and you want to go uh, ATX web show and then you've got a template and we can replace this so what does a template do for you well, next, let's say you're going to do this on a regular basis. Next time you want to, next time you got a show, 
you open up Logic, you hit New, and you've got the option to reload that template from last time. So you've got all your channel strip settings, you've got, uh, hopefully not the audio, but you've got the colors all the way you want them, and then all you have to do is drop in the audio and go and you start cutting stuff up. So that's what this next part's gonna be about. I'm gonna show you how to cut, um, cut and edit and paste, you know, um, to get to get everything lined up because sometimes you got people talking over each other you don't really want that you've got people coughing like this right here might be a cough or Dave might be talking but yeah. or a laugh no he's just saying yeah but let's pretend that was a cough you know Dave what are you doing um, I'm gonna paste there's a, there's a really cool trick that I want to show you real quick I'm gonna paste this in here um, well I thought I was gonna paste that in there I mean, I can't. Oh well, you just have to imagine it. So let's say I want to cut out this little this little cough right here. Um, you can access the tool menu in Logic by hitting Escape. Escape brings up these different tools, and these are cool. Mainly the pointer tool, which grabs stuff, moves stuff. The scissors tool, which will cut a line in between the audio files, so you can select. Well, you don't want to do that. So you can select these different ones. You can see the little bar comes up whenever I click on one. Um, or what I usually use, this, this workflow comes pretty standard. You've got a command click option of a marquee tool. And the marquee tool basically selects a piece of the audio and lets you do something with it. So what I do, I hold down command, marquee tool. And then I click and I hold, click and drag over like however many tracks I have for that one particular spot I need to cut out. And when I hit delete, it'll delete that area from all of the tracks. And then I just regular click and grab all the tracks and I scooch them back. And what this does is if someone's coughing or there's like dead silence on all the tracks, you, they'll still be lined up all the, all the rest of the way, but you cut out that annoying part uh, and, then, and then you move it back and you give it a little crossfade so nothing pops because if you got a uh, a dead space here, it's kind of it'll sound weird. I think you'll hear it. Let me play it. <laughs> well, I'm glad to have you back. Oh, I'm still on the loop. Whoops. Total pro here, guys. I know. Oh, and there's the audio file. Anyways, now that I've got that, I can show you this. Ha! So you select all this and you hit delete. Boom. Both are gone. Click and drag. Move it back. And then give it a crossfade. So what I sorry what I did escape and zero is the fade tool um, and you can click and drag like this boom crossfade click and drag across boom crossfade anywhere you cut across uh, you can do that let me see where's the other there we go you can click and drag crossfade or, well just fade in that case fades are cool you can move them out basically this brings the volume down all the way to the bottom um, and that's good to do at the end or the beginning, depending if you need to, you know, but so that's how I edit stuff, you know, take out the bad spots, make sure everything lines up. If there's audio issues for like 20 minutes, you can cut out a whole section, um, cut out a whole section, delete it, and then click and drag and move the stuff. Oops. Escape one, get familiar with these for reals. And then you can click and drag it back. Then escape zero, crossfade, fade, fade. And this just make sure there's not any weird pops or clicks in between the audio. Everything just flows. So, so that's, that's kind of how I chop stuff up and you'll, you'll, you'll learn to, to get familiar with it. Um, and you'll get better with it. You'll get fast. You'll memorize hitting escape, hitting one to select, hitting command to use the marquee, cut something, grab something, delete it you know, grab it, move it back, hit escape, hit zero, give it a little crossfade and go, you know, and you can, you can do this while the show is playing. So you can actually edit a little bit faster. And that's just kind of inside how I edit. Other people might have other ways. So what I do after this is I will, I'll actually bounce uh, all tracks as files. And uh, let me see if you can do that here or I'll export all tracks as audio files and what this does is it'll it'll export two tracks to wherever you do you know just a desktop or whatever because what I do is I drop them into GarageBand and ex export them as a as a 64 kilobit per second GarageBand file because that 
that actually will make them sound better than the 64 kilobit per second uh, export from Logic. For whatever reason, the encoding, um, GarageBand just does a better, just makes the voices sound better. They sound cleaner. They don't sound as uh, degraded. Um, it's really weird, but it it really works. So you can export, I think, as AIFF or or Wave. GarageBand doesn't care. 16-bit. You don't need to. You don't need to do anything else. Just hit save, and it'll bounce it to the desktop. Then you open up GarageBand um, and export it as a 64 kilobit per second. Make sure you turn off any like reverb or anything. GarageBand sometimes it adds that stuff. You don't really want that. Um, so that's kind of that workflow, and then you got to do the stuff with uploading it to your to your hosting site. I'm going to do a screencast about that. Um, I use Amazon S3, which is is uh, is a cloud hosting service. Um, it's pretty easy. All you got to do is create an account and then you just upload the files to that and then you link to it. But I'll have to, I'll, I'll walk you through that cause it took me a little bit to figure out what exactly the heck that was. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to do another screencast where I walk through the process of getting a website, uh, getting hosting like Amazon S3 is what I use. And then, and then a WordPress plugin. Um, and then you just sub, submit, you know, get some art artwork and submit it. But so this is kind of this is kind of my workflow, and this is how I do my shows. Um, hopefully, you guys learned something. Hopefully, uh, I taught you some useful stuff. And um, if you have any questions about anything, shoot me an email at coldwaraaron at gmail dot com, or you can go to my website at aaronplayingdrums.com. That's Aaron with two A's, A A R O N. Aaronplayingdrums.com, Cold War Aaron at gmail.com is my email address uh shoot me any questions or suggestions or you know make fun of me or something i don't it's cool i don't care uh i'd love to answer any questions you guys got i'm gonna make some more screencasts so if you got one um that'd be great you know ask me about noise gates ask me about eqs ask me about uh compressors you know i'll share what i know and maybe we can learn some new stuff together anyways i hope you enjoyed this um, you know, rate it good if you like it, if it helped, help other people watch it, pass it on, whatever you want to do. And I'm signing off. I'm actually going to go finish editing, editing this podcast. So I will catch you guys later.